fight for you, no man. But that thing... It scares me. No, no, I ain't, I ain't talking about the freak, right? He's not here, is she? How do I get this thing off? One shudders to imagine what inhuman thoughts lie behind that mask. What dreams of chronic and sustained cruelty. I'd like to dedicate this video to my boyfriend, who has been asking me to make a Team Fortress doll for months at this point. So, let's make Pyro. Three months ago. It is not an accident that I'm opening it like a mania, because she is going to be a mania. Mania, Frankenstein, John Gold, mania, mania. I ordered this doll for the haptic feedback experience. Which I already got, so well, it was good pretext. Meet Survivor. Ale ma plecki fajne. <laughs> no, it looks awesome. Like the marbling. I'm gonna do a close up of her face. She's gorgeous, and she still sounds on. The marble effect on the skin is so hypnotizing, I could look at her all day and find a different pattern every time. The face up is super cute, so we're not going to wipe it off. We also got a marble booby set to match the burnt skin. We don't have a marble blank, so making one will be a challenge, but we have some techniques in mind. She will be featured in a video which is going to be an awesome video game themed collab with our smart little friends. That collab is now. Isn't time travel fun? Hello and welcome to I Am A Crafter, where I, your host, Delusional Barb, try a craft for the first time and hope that it turns out perfectly. Today, we're gonna try to water marble this pretty face into a burnt face, which is also pretty. If you're burnt, you know, don't mind me. I have some nail polish and I've never done that before, so I guess we're just gonna give it a whirl. I know that watermarbling your nails is like 2015 or something, but I thought it would be a perfect technique to make a marbled effect for this face. Pretty sure I know what the result of this TV show will be. Is this good? Try it. Yeah. I mean, she's burnt. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We are trying again. We tried again and again, as you will see. We are doing this on a tea head, so we needed the streaks to be lighter, but the lighter shade of polish was bubbling for some reason. After a brief consultation with our co-conspirators on this collab, we decided to try marbling a cinnamon head instead, with the darker polish, as it wasn't giving as much trouble with the texture. Let's see how Alex handled that. Before I'll try another attempt of marbling, I want to modify this head just a little bit. I have to admit, I'm more of an anime style lover when it comes to smart dolls, and in general. And I fell in love with semi-real sculpts with bigger and more anime style eyes like I did on one of the commissions I made and our Syndra custom doll. Because Pyro is such a cheerful character, at least in their mind, I want a sweet and happy expression. So I'm adding epoxy sculpt to make the eye shapes look like banana, because bananas are very happy fruits. Genesis sculpt has a very serious face, so I'm covering the lips corners with clay too. Time for more marble experiments. We figured out that the darker nail polish works much better because it has more opacity, so I'm going to use that only. It took a few tries to figure out the shapes and the right tools, and then a few tries on the head. Finally, I found a pattern I liked. It was a bit empty on one side, so I dunked it again, but only this cheek. And this is how it looks after removing some small bubbles with acetone. After a coat of Mr. Super Clear, the shiny effect disappeared and the marbling looks very, very natural. I really, really like it. I 
really struggled to come up with the outfit for our pyro. We like to reimagine characters and put our own twist onto it. And an additional challenge here was that the game and the character is basically covered in a one-piece suit, similar to what you can get at the Smartle store, which don't get me wrong, I love it. It's designed by Maruko Halu, who make the nicest smart doll garments ever. So I didn't want to make the same thing, but worse, because I know I'm not on that level of garment design. So I decided to go for a crop jacket with big sleeves and decided to leave the pants for later. <laughs> The jacket is a new pattern available on our website engineer.com if you want to make one with me. I've managed to use up all of this fabric that I had for patterning, but I think I'm there. There's a couple of things that I want to do different. I think the glove will have to be a bit bigger. I think the buttons are stupid, but let's not think about it. And I think the collar could benefit from like, I don't know, maybe seven millimeters more to be more like powerful. But I'm starting to get the janitorial look. There's also gonna be some style lines here. So like more stitching and like details and like pockets and everything. But I think I got it. And this is only like the fifth freaking <laughs> test. But yeah, it's, it's going good. And the glove is awesome. It's gonna be a bit different, but it's awesome already. It's elastic. Look at it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Amazing. Okay, so let's get on with the sewing. I start by reconnecting the split front and back pieces and adding some visual noise there by top stitching these seam allowances down. The next step is to connect the fronts to the back at the shoulders. I prepared the sleeves next by gathering the bottom edge to attach the cuff. Then the sleeves can go into the bodice. I added some straps here just to add some complexity, I guess. Because the jack is the... Because the jack ass. <laughs> Because the jacket is fully lined, I had to split the bottom trim into three pieces and I'm now attaching them into the places that they're supposed to go, gathering the bottom edge to match the length. To add the color, I'm easing the curve of the neckline by snipping it in a bit. I make sure the center lines up in the back and pin it into place. Like most seams here, I top stitch that seam allowance up and it's time for the button plackets. One of them is lined and one of them isn't, but they both go in the front. Before we continue, we can now put the male side of the snap attachments to hide the underside in the placket. Very nice. Now, I did all of the work off screen, but I essentially made another one like this with my lining fabric. I am connecting the main and lining along the bottom placket first, and then making sure both the plackets are folded along the middle before I stitch the colors, fronts, cuffs, and backs together. Okay, now the hard part is to separate them a little bit um, and do it like this. Did you see that? I'll show you again. I have the main and the lining together here, 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 here. Pick up only the main, pick up the lining with the other hand and reach through to get them together, color to color, and then start pinning it. It's gonna be a big loop. See, until you reach the sleeves. Okay, now let's see if um, I was right and that, that's gonna turn out to be a nice jacket. This part is always a bit nerve wracking to me because you're playing twister with the garment when sewing, lining, and it always seems like it's not going to turn to the right side, but it eventually does. At this point, you can add top stitching to hold the layers in place and after we add the remaining snaps and have a mental breakdown. Um, question of the day. How many of the snaps I put in are actually working? Let's check. Something fell in the trash. It's about to beat those snaps. First one works. Ah, second one works. Okay. Trash. Okay. Trash. Trash. It looks like it's on, but it's not. So, half. Anybody have good snaps? But if you didn't know, snaps are quite easy to remove, especially when they're put in wrong. I need a good snap dealer. It's always a problem to find notions at a believable doll scale. The jacket looks a bit plain for now, but I will get another layer, so I'm not too worried about it at this stage. I like it. I wanted to add some more references from the game, so on the back of the jacket we're doing a print of this little graphic that comes up when you kill an enemy with pyro using the rain blower. I thought it was a cute idea and it features the balloonicorn, which is the 
the unicorn, but it's a balloon, so it's called Balloon Corn. It's uh, the lore behind this character is so silly. If you don't know them, I recommend you check out the Meet Pyro video, which we will link below, which is basically what we did for the intro. Um, and try the game too if you like gaming. It's old, but gold. Epic. <laughs> it's so cute. <gasps> I also added these. You know what this is. It's the pants I made and then tossed in the trash because they were ugly. Here's the only funny bit for me making them. And we're ready for lighting, which I hope works because I have not tested it. Because we are, you know, delusional Barb. <laughs> for the sake of your attention span, let's make the real deal. This design was sent in by one of our followers on Instagram and we thought that with some added hotness, they will be perfect for our pyro girl. An excuse to use my Cricut and press some vinyl is good. Gotta get that return on investment. I kept the color palette from the jacket prints and added the aforementioned hotness in form of flames. These pants were actually made with a pattern I did for Marceline. I just cut some holes in it basically. Now I will start by hemming the holes and doing a dance break apparently. After all eight pieces are ready and hemmed, it's time to combine them into two front and two back pieces so I can make pants. For the front, I take the red, let's call it overlay, and go with it over, then under, and then over, the main black part. And with the back, I do the opposite, go under, over, and under. And it's that simple. It looks complex, but it's just a perfect illusion. And um, from this point, it's just attaching the side seam like normal pants, adding a waistband like normal pants, sewing the crotch and sewing the inseams like normal pants. They're just pants. Where you see, wow, I just see pants, you know? Sorry, I'm a bit out of control with the musical references today. Anyway, how do you line this, you know? Like I'm not gonna do that. So hopefully it doesn't stain too much. It's a rite of passage. You know, being an Enchantarium doll, you gotta have some stains. I hope that nothing's tangled here or, or whatever, cause that would suck. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Like so, and it should be good. It's right, right, right. Oh no, did I stitch something wrong? Oh no, <laughs> oh no. Okay, maybe if I do this now? Yeah, okay. Okay, 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 it's fine, I think. And then this is outside, okay. This one is fine. It's a puzzle, it's a mystery, you know? Okay, okay, almost there. Yes, okay. Whew, that was a workout. Now putting this on is not easy, because you have to weave the legs. Whoa! Please don't stain, please don't stain, please don't stain, please don't stain. Huh? How cool is that? You're like prototypes, boots, but I like it! It's cute, right? Tell me it's cute, right? Most of the time, they're going to wear a gas mask, but everybody needs a face. As always, I'm starting from a layer of MSC and a sketch with watercolor pencils. Some of the clay was still visible, so I covered it with paint, but instead of blending it, I decided to make it a feature and add some more texture to the skin. Nobody knows what's behind the original Pyro's mask, so I can do whatever I want, and I want cuteness with a little bit of uncomfortable vibe, maybe like Toga from My Hero Academia. I'm adding some pastels to make the marbling more visible and match to the body. My first idea was to go for orange blushing and lips, but it didn't really suit the red outfit, so later I added more pink and browns to balance the look. I know that we're going to use a grey wig, so I'm drawing the brows and eyelashes in cooler shades. When I like the sketch, I move on to acrylic and vinyl paints. I'm trying my best to make the lashes slim and curvy and pretty, and I think I did a really good job this time. Everything looks clean and sharp after a few touch-ups here and there. I didn't want the whole lash to be black, so I added this grey stripe in the middle. As I said before, I'm going for a more anime aesthetic this time. 
mostly because the game itself is very stylized. I like adding these white highlights to the lashes and she's going to have light grey hair, so it suits perfectly here. I usually show you just a little bit of the actual work and I don't record everything because it's just boring. So here you have some speed paint video of more white details and some small fixes. It's really a lot of work. I usually like to have the doll closer to me when I do the tiny details. I just better see what I'm doing. So that's why I'm just not recording it usually. But let's go back to normal recording. At this point, I realize I don't like the orange lip, so I'm changing it with pastels, paint and pencils for dark red with black gradient. It takes a few layers to get there. The final result is nice, trust me. I'm adding a bit of silver paint to the eyes for a sparkly detail and also some white paint to make all the stuff that makes a doll in Chanterium style. When I was modding the lips, I also cut just a little bit of upper lid so I can paint an open smile with teeth. And for now, she looks like this. As I said before, later I added some more pink to the cheeks to balance the orange tone, but she looks really cute. Okay, so I think I failed to mention that not only is this a video game collab, but we are all doing a prop for the character and we are doing it mainly because I want to set the world on fire. Um, uh, <laughs> you heard me right, we're gonna make this into a real flamethrower. I modeled the weapon from scratch in CAD and sent it over to the printer. Let's play my favorite game! Did it print? Today we will find out if the material lab... Actually, let me try to check if it's printed. This seems like a yes! Sorry for the air purifier, but it stinks here. Okay. It seems that this didn't work. My little 3D printing helper didn't do everything. Shut up! Thank you. Let's see if this worked. It seems like it did. Everything's out of focus. Well, this is looking pretty good. Very long print. We'll see when we get there, but it seems like... Okay, there are some defects, but I think we can make it work. Yes! This was a real collaboration with the Manchinterium as well, as Alex's maniacal Italian mafia boyfriend was the one to convince me that we can make a working flamethrower in the first place. I'm not gonna explain what's going on here because we ended up not using this contraption at all for the flames because I probably broke it and when it was time to use it, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> was away in Italy. Will you burn something? No. I'm scared. <laughs> but here's proof that it did once work. Maybe test it out before we secure the shrink tubes. I'm scared. Why? <laughs> God of fire. I'm so excited. <laughs> the sound is it's amazing. Fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Let's paint the base colors while the weapon is still in pieces. I'm using black, grey and red for most parts and applying two coats of matte varnish for protection. I also painted the mask and I made two cardboard fire drawings to add to the lenses. You know, for like a flame reflection effect. It's really cool on the photos, you'll see at the end. There's also a gas filter and these things which I think are grenades or bullets, but I'm not sure. The shoes got a layer of matte black and a little bit of grey on the soles to bring out the shape. And I also painted the rubber gloves black with yellow details. Later, I added some dirt and mm -hmm, uh, ketchup. <laughs> a sudden continuity error makes you see the future. And in this future, the lollipop is already constructed. So I'm painting it white and pink. You will see the construction a little bit later. Barb also printed this bottle. And I think this is my favorite item to paint this time. Look at all this dirt and ketchup. It's nice. This is a nice prop. It's a shame that it's almost not visible <laughs> all the time. Okey doke. I 
think we're gonna do a dry fit first and then for legal reasons I'm not gonna show you how to precisely make a flamethrower that busts out flames but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a rundown on how it works and then we'll figure it out. Resin prints aren't always the most dimensionally accurate and with paint on top of that I had to do some sanding to make things fit. I envisioned the parts coming tightly together, but that always seems easier on paper and never works when the parts are real, so I had to resort to using some super glue. Okay, so I don't think the designer of this entirely thought this through, that, that designer being me. I have to admit that this assembly is going to be more and more unhinged from this point on. Sorry. I have my secret contraption contraptioned on the inside. That's all you need to know. And you need to know that it works. It's like the whole point. Now, these wires that do something that you don't need to know about go into the tube here. No, they don't. No, they don't. This first goes through here. Oh, this is gonna be tough. We might be in more trouble than I would like to admit. Or maybe not. Or maybe we are. You won't know until you watch this video till the end, which I hope then by the end of that, I know what I'm doing. This just pretends to be a working thing. Oh, Margaret's coming out. <sighs> Margaret's my British alter ego, if you didn't know that yet. Don't look, I'll like censor this. Hear me out, does this go through? Oh my God, am I a genius or what? It doesn't, but that would be a genius move. Explains things, yeah. We need to be able to open this to charge the battery for the thing that's inside, because the thing that's inside is the thing that makes it go brrrt, you know? So if we can't make it go brrrt, we can't make it go um, zap, and we can't make fire. And like this one cannot be glued on, this one, for the reason of, if I glue this, nothing wrong happens, so it actually can be glued on. Then this one can't be glued on. This is the only one that has to be like take offable, and also this has to be take offable. So then from here to here, we need to have, oh no. Welcome to Barb tries not to spill glue on her new mat that she loves very much. I have this like whatever tool, so I just stuff this on and I just wanted you to see my triumph over the tech and this. So we're just gonna, you know, do a leap of faith. N not do a leap do a leap of, I mean, do a leap of faith if you want. Okay, push it in there. Oh no! <laughs> just push the tip of that instead. Ah, uh, do a leap faith. Didn't work. This worked all right. Anyway. Oh no. <laughs> why, am I so, I'm, I'm, why am I so criminally stupid? All of these pieces need to be on before this goes on. My dears. I added some glue. Maybe I'll give it to Alex to maybe hide it. Other than this being a little bit flimsy still, I think it's pretty much ready. <sighs> Which makes me terrified, but it's super cool and epic and I love it already even if it doesn't light up So uh, to operate this first you have to put it into super glue um, And then uh, you have to press a don't press B. B is for Barb and you don't know what will happen if you press that so <laughs> No After trials and tribulations, I have to say goodbye to my remote controlled dreams <laughs> We have just tried for the past 30 minutes to make it work, but it doesn't work. For some reason, we cannot get a consistent spark to start the fire. So I think we're gonna have to do it um, the analog way. It's gonna be cool looking though, so I guess like mission accomplished, right? The remote clearly works because like, obviously something's happening, right? It's supposed to make a spark here. And like most of the time nothing happens. Oh, oh. And sometimes it looks promising, but then this tube with the fuel doesn't always either blow it the right way or the right speed or whatever. So we have to give up. I'm sorry. I wanted it to be epic. I wanted everyone to love me, but as always, I will be the loveless person in this marriage. I'm gonna detach the battery and just do it with the lighter. 
It was a nice dream. It's nice to have dreams. But it's sad when they come fucking crushing down <laughs> and slap you in the face. I'm gonna put it together with glue. See, this is what was inside. Do not try this at home. It doesn't work oh, anyway. Well, it's not gonna work anyway anymore. Time of death, 1403. Sad violin plays in background. <laughs> Sad barb loves in background. Rest in peace. Now, when I have the flamethrower in one piece, I could add some more details and shiny texture and even some ketchup stains. Of course I broke something in the process, but I'm pretty sure Barb will fix that for me, right? Barb fix, please. We want to use this smart doll wig for this doll, but she's too elegant, too clean, and not giving a battlefield vibe. So I took my hair straightener and destroyed the perfect curl. I want a messy hairstyle with sticking ends, maybe a bit Alice from Twilight style. I'm setting the results with styling foam and the wig is ready. Now the windows to the soul, the eyes. I made this pair, but I didn't like them, so let's make something new. Since I read a comment saying that printing an eye design and gluing a cabochon is lazy, I'm making my own eyes by hand. And I actually fell in love with the effect. I don't care that the eyes are not exactly the same, but the painted vibe and the visible brush strokes are adding something, you know, interesting to the look. Nobody knows how Pyro's eyes look, that's why we did what we do when we don't know what to do, and it's using our signature colors, green and blue. Green is my favorite color and blue is Barb's favorite, so that's why we're using them for our channel and, you know, like all the merch and stuff. And dolls like Tsula and Enchan. Enchan's literally like half blue and green. I couldn't stop myself from painting a little flame inside the eyes using fluorescent paints. And here they are, green and blue, just because I can, nobody can stop me. Okay, time for final touches. I made a little mock-up of how I'd like the harness to lay and got to work. I'm using elastic in a couple of different widths and some wire to make custom hardware to connect everything. Sharky. <laughs> to make the cross strap, I first measured it and then... I super zoom and connect the elastic through this tiny buckle. I have a lot of ideas because <laughs> I feel like because there's this part of the hardware that's sticking out that it needs to have this line in this direction to like justify it being there. This may be not the worst. I like it, but I know that Alex will not like it. I have a feeling that she will not like it. Alex actually very surprisingly didn't mind it, so I did it in this crisscross way and this is what it ended up looking like. The mask, which you can see printing right now because we didn't know where to put this shot in. It's printed with rubber resin, it was a super fun experiment, same with the shoes, which I am not gonna mention ever again in this video. Um, anyway, the mask needed a magnet because it was a bit floppy, so I covered that with felt to protect the face up a bit. And as mentioned before, I made the lollipop and it's really simple. You go to engineterium.com and buy a mug, then trace it onto some cardboard. Then you add a chopstick and cover the carton with some paper. I snipped the paper to make sure that the edge would bend over to the flat parts of the lollipop. It's pretty, pretty dangerous. Sorry, it's late. And I am losing my mind. And then while you're gluing the rest, you have to have an argument with your sister about lighting up a ring of fire for a photo shoot of the doll. Srąg ognia, żadnego kręgu ognia nie będziemy robić. Żeby w ogóle to odpalić, przecież nie będę... Jak mam ci zrobić krąg ognia? Sama się zastanów, jak chcesz krąg ognia. Krąg ognia. In the meantime, I was trying to make those bullets or cannon refills or whatever this is. I thought I can just make them out of a hot glue stick, but I ended up rolling a strip of paper onto itself. I felt like because Pyro's mask goes over their whole head in the game, I should cover the head somehow, so I made a hood to attach to the jacket. I thought about making it black, but it looked like Darth Vader. <laughs> But now that I made it in red, all I can see is the Squid Game guards. Oh well.
this is how they turned out. I am obsessed with a doll, with a photo shoot, with a prop. It's amazing, <laughs> if I do say so myself, you know? I had many reasons to go into this project. My boyfriend, who helps us out on the regular with 3D modeling, and he was actually the flamethrower operator for the photo shoot. he requested a Team Fortress doll, and I'm aware that the game is super niche these days, and it may have not been the smartest business decision in terms of like clickability of this video, but I wanted to do it for him, and not just so that he stops bringing it up, but like genuinely. I also wanted to make the flamethrower real because I thought it would be an epic prop challenge and last but not least, it gave me the perfect excuse to collaborate with some of my doll friends from the smart doll community. I know that a lot of you subscribe for the monster high content and we did that for like five years and it saddens me when you guys say that you don't really like the big dolls because I love them and I love coming up with like ridiculous projects like this one. As mentioned, this video is part of a collaboration. My friends Cindy and John from My Lady Disdain, Catherine from Magical Girl Kit Kat Gaming, and Beth from Beth Ramsden also made awesome custom dolls from games like Borderlands, Devil May Cry, and Death Stranding. All including props for the challenge, of course, so go check them out, they're linked in the description. If you're still here, well, thank you. If you'd like to hang out with us live, you can do so tomorrow, Sunday the 20th at 6 p.m. Central European time over at our Patreon. We will discuss the behind the scenes of this and the previous custom and have a lot of fun. Lastly, tell us what your favorite video games are. I recently played Astroneer with my boyfriend and we absolutely loved it. And I think Alex's favorite game is Dragon Age. Is Dragon Age my favorite game? I have no idea because I have never finished it. I'm always stuck somewhere in the middle, but I yes, I really like it. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we will see you next time. Bye! This video was made thanks to our Patreons. The biggest credit goes to our top Lost Sister tier supporters. Mary Chandler, Mary Helen Burns, Call Me Ash, Erin McCoy, and Red X. We also thank our cousin tier Patreons, Kaylee, Lucky Ducky Lulu, Series Eden, Even Draws Things, Sarah Long, May V, Gianette, Josephine Falk, Kaylee M, Melissa Novoa, Rinth, Fan of TA, Aliyah J, Catherine G, Ashley, Etoile, Hannah Lemon, Elise Sherbet, Zari, Genevieve Duflock, Amelia Blackwood, Andrea Brigadier, Ghostly Gardens, Super Meow, Bowen, Inca, Stephanie, Tiffany Jeffords, Karaho, Landy Monk, Katie Baker, Caribou, Sibs Party, Dragon Art Customs, Ninja Star Dezino, Dream Up, and last but not least, Catherine Nodden. Love you guys. See you next time. And see you tomorrow. Bye!